Hello, this is Lady Boule, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. This is Stephen Twitch Boss. He is a hip hop dancer, a choreographer, actor, television producer, and television personality, which means that he's doing a number of things to make a living. He most recently was the DJ and co-producer of the Ellen DeGeneres show, which ended in May of this year. Today it was announced that this young man has died of self-inflicted gunshot wound. He's 40 years old, born in Montgomery, Alabama on September 29th of 1982, and he passed away in Los Angeles, California yesterday, December 13th. 2022. This is truly sad for me, not only because he's from my home state of Alabama, but also because this is a young black man who has not reached his potential in life, and already he's gone. I've watched him on the Ellen DeGeneres show a number of times. He's always very pleasant. He always seemed happy. He calls himself DJ Twitch. And everybody seemed to like him, including Ellen. He's a good dancer. He's an excellent dancer. And I think he taught Ellen her dance moves. And even when others are coming on the show and dancing, he'll come out and dance with them, even with the children. He was really wonderful with the children, dancing with the children. So he was um, very, you know, he was entertaining. And he was interesting to watch. So it's a very sad thing that this man has transitioned at such a, an early age, 40 is early for somebody to be leaving, especially when they haven't fully realized their potential. Now, I'm going to say something that's probably going to be different from what everybody else is going to report about this young man. But I'm not really speaking about this young man right now. It's really about black men in general. And I'm just going to say this. I believe that black men have got to learn to say no and I mean this not in a mean way, but black men are peaking too soon. They're getting too far away from their center, from their culture, from their people. And they're trying to live a fantasy life, I believe, that people have told them would make them happy. And he seemed happy. Whenever you saw him, he was smiling. At least whenever you saw him on the Ella DeGeneres show, he was smiling. He seemed like the friendliest and happiest person in the world. He really did. He seemed like the most likable person in the world. But clearly something dark was going on with this young man. And all kinds of speculation is going around. But I'm going to go with the most obvious thing. In the land of our captivity, and we are still in the land of our captivity, no matter how much we want to believe that we're not. But in the land of our captivity, we are still trying too hard to be like them. There is a reason why other races of people live in clans, tribes, and communities with people that look like them. Because that is your best chance for having the best life. Being around people that are most like you. But in America, we have been sold a bill of, of garbage. That everything and everybody is better than we are. So whenever we get a chance, we go off chasing that fantasy of looking for something that's different and better than we are. As a point of reference, the former director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, said in, I believe it was 1953, that the greatest threat to American democracy was black unity, black people being unified. Now they see that as a threat. And to that end, everything has been done to destroy the black family, the black man, and, and the black woman to a certain extent, and the black children by not providing decent education and de decent supports in education for black children. Now we act like we don't know that, and maybe some of us don't. So we start trying to live lives that are not even right for us. Lives that other people have designed and told us this is going to make us happy, and then we go in trying to ma make that real. Going out here marrying people that you don't know anything about, and 
somehow you're supposed to present to the world that you are really happy here until it falls down, until it falls apart. And I believe that's a part of the problem now. You know, people can criticize where they want to, but I believe that that's part of the problem. Overwhelmingly, black men do not need to be marrying other races of people for the reason that I just stated. This is a conspiracy against black people. So they throw these women that they don't want to black men. And then, you know, you're supposed to treat that just like it's a, a prize. Now, I'm not talking to black men who really think this. I'm just giving a general talk about what I believe is going wrong with so many black men because we see so many negative things going on with black men in the public. And I'm talking about high-profile black men that you think would know better. We see so many negative things going wrong. And there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. This is just not happenstance. This is by design. And for people who want to reference black women, black women rarely marry out. Matter of fact, these divestors are on social media platforms day in and day out, dragging black women because black women are still loyal to black men. I'm not saying that's all of them. I'm saying overwhelmingly most black women are committed to the black family and to black men. That's what I say, that's what studies say, and that's what we see. We can eyeball it. This is just a tragedy. Ending your own life used to be unheard of in the black community. But the more we get away from ourselves, away from our center, away from our spirituality and what we really believe in, and the more we adopt ways of other people, the more we start doing things that they do. It's really heartbreaking that he didn't see any other alternative, that he didn't reach out to anybody, that he just did this. Now, and nobody knows what happened, but I'm still going to say that black men need to learn to say no. You need to take your time and grow up. They need to grow. Well, and black men in particular need to stay as close to the black community as they can. And I don't mean staying close to thuggery and, and degeneracy and all this nonsense that a lot of people carry on. You don't need to rush out of the black community, away from your people, away from what's familiar, running headlong into somebody else's community and into somebody else's fairy tale that is going to end up being a nightmare for you. Now, they keep talking about this man's wife. This is the wife and the children. She was, uh, he married this woman in 2013. She already had one child. He adopted that child and they have two children. So they're talking about the wife and she announced the death, of course. And it's all about the wife. Everybody's going to be going on and on about how the wife is in grief and all of that. But nobody has said anything about his mother. This is him with his mother. A beautiful picture. One of his last Instagram posts was of him and his mother. They were laughing. He was hugging her and talking about how much he loved her. He signed off by saying, I love you, Mom. And I think that's significant. And she's grieving too. In another Instagram post, he expressed his concern about violence and brutality against black people. And in the video, he seemed frustrated because he said whenever he posted anything about George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, people came back and said, well, what about black on black crime? Now, that lets you know who his followers were. So he couldn't speak about his concern about black people without somebody coming up with a rebuttal about black on black crime because that's what it came down to. And that seemed to really frustrate him because he cared about black people. And that was a part of the conundrum that he was in because of the lifestyle that he had chosen. Probably the business, the show business, and the choice of a mate. That conflicted with his concern about his people, black people. He mentioned Trayvon Martin. Orlando Castillo, Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, he, he, he named all of them. He named all of them. Those are things that were of concern to him. But who was he going to talk about it to when you've gotten so far away from your center, 
your center being your family, what's familiar to you. You've gotten so far away from that. And you're living a life that somebody else is telling you you ought to be living. Or you're living a life that somebody else wants you to live. And so you, you're lost. You're lost. If you listen to his videos, he cared. He cared about the violence against black people, black men, and black women. But who was he going to talk to about it? Where could he take that? To Ellen DeGeneres? No. To his wife? No. Because then that becomes a competition about, well, you care about the black people. Now you're married to me. I'm not saying I know exactly how that works, but that's pretty much how that's going to go. You have divided your loyalties when you do that. For all of this love is love, and we're in the 21st century, and I don't see race, and you marry whoever you want to, you most certainly can. But when you do, when you marry outside your race, you lose a part of yourself, which is to say, you lose a part of your identity. Because honestly, what you have done is that you have decided that somebody who has been your enemy for 400 years is all of a sudden now your soulmate and best friend. That flies in the face of common sense. Black men have got to learn to say no. Society has taught us, black people, that we're going to be happier with anybody than a black person. Any other race of people is going to make us happier than a black person because they're not black, they don't have black skin, they don't have black hair, they don't have black features, they don't have the black persona, they don't have the black thing going. So they're going to be happier with anybody than a black person. And we see so many black people trying to live this lie, trying to live this fantasy. I believe that black men need to learn to say no. The best way for black people to survive the matrix that we're in is for us to stay connected to each other. We have to keep learning this over and over and over again. But it's the best way for black men and the black women to survive the matrix that we're in. This man cared about black people, is what I'm saying. He cared. When you listen to his videos, you realize he cared. But what was he going to take that? He had sold out. When you marry outside of your race, you might as well be Charles Barkley or Shannon Sharp or some of those other black people who don't even pretend to care about the black community for real. You might as well just go on off with that because there is no way that you can take the love that you might have for black people because then you're splitting loyalties and you can't serve two masters. That's how come a lot of black women don't marry outside their race. And people think, well, why don't you can't get them. Yes, you can. To black, if a black man can get a white woman, a black woman can get a white man. And I'll go as far as to say that a black woman can get a better quality of white man than a black man can get in a white woman. Because everybody knows that black men are getting the white women that the white men don't want. But black women do understand that. Your loyalty is split. And so you might as well just, you know, just suck it up and just say, okay, I'm over here. Like some of them do. Like, I don't see race anymore. And that's, what, that's how they deal with it. But if you care, you're going to suffer. No, I'm not saying that that's why this man did what he did. I'm sure there was a lot of things going on in his life. But that's a part of the conflict. I, I would put money on that. As black women, we have to stop being afraid to challenge or call out things to do with black men. Because they're not afraid to challenge or call out anything to do with black women. Everything that they can blame on black women, they will blame on black women. So I think it's only fair that when we make an observation relative to black men, we should not be afraid to voice it. I'm going to end by saying black men have got to learn to say no. They've got to learn to say no to temptations. They've got to learn to stop falling into traps that other people set for them. And above all, they've got to realize how important they are to the growth and development of the black community. Okay, y'all. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.